listen to the words. No picture. She staged the scene to fool you. It won't fool me. To fool everybody. Just, just listen, please. My name is Mehmet. How did you come to be here? What happened? Who do you know? I think it's very fine. Nothing wrong, but it's very hot. You sleep outside? Or inside? No, no, inside. No, no, no. It's very hot. Very hot. Very hot. She tried to get him to say they're being treated badly. She's leading him, putting words in his mouth. So what else is now? My point is, she's so obviously trying. Can I just hear that part about the kindness again? Play that again. No, no, no. It's very, it's very, it's very, it's very, it's very, See, she's obviously trying to get him to say it's abusive, and he denies it. We've got them. Maybe. Look at the picture. Barbed wire. People half naked. The viewers are going to understand. It was August, so some of the guys took their shirts off. They're going to see that that doesn't make it a concentration camp. And they're going to understand that that guy... Fikret Alic. Fikret Alic. They'll understand he looks thin because he was sick when he was a kid. I mean, his ribs are deformed. Obviously, that's not because of mistreatment at a camp. Anyway, they'll see he's laughing, and they'll see the barbed wires on wrong. The refugees are obviously outside. It'll be obvious. Maybe. Look, we're not going to try to compete with CNN technically. We're just going to tell the truth. Come on, let's look at some of the clips a few times. I think it's very fine. Nothing wrong, but it's very, very kind. It's very kind. I think it's very fine. Nothing wrong, but it's very hot. No, no, no. It's very, it's very, it's very kind. It's very, very You feel safe here? I think it's very safe, but it's, it's very hot. No, no, I, I, no, no, I, I think so is the, the refugee camp, not the prison. No, no, I, I think so is the, the refugee camp, not the prison. No, no, no. It's very, it's very kind. Very, very kind. It's the refugee camp. Simple. It's the refugee camp. Simple. In the past, most Westerners thought of Yugoslavia as a gorgeous country they'd love to visit. But starting in 1991, this nation, unified since 1918, was torn apart by ferocious wars of secession. This film was shot in Bosnia-Herzegovina in 1992. During the previous five months, Islamist fundamentalists had started a secessionist rebellion. They were supported by the U.S. and German governments, which coveted the economically strategic Balkans. Secession was opposed by loyalist Yugoslavs from all ethnic groups. Powerful Western interests wanted to intervene, but they couldn't just start bombing. They needed favorable public opinion. They needed the work of the mass media. The media claimed the loyalist Serbs were motivated by hatred of Muslims. In fact, the Serbs weren't motivated by hatred at all. They wanted to hold Yugoslavia together, and they didn't want to be ruled by an Islamic fundamentalist faction. Many, if not most, Muslims agreed they too were loyal to Yugoslavia. The Western media labeled the loyalist Serbs the new Nazis. The media called the loyalist Muslims rebels. But the media called the Islamic fundamentalists moderate Democrats. ITN, the British news station, was the first to mass distribute images to support demonization of the Serbs and the loyalist Muslims. Those images came from film that ITN shot in two locations at a detention center for POWs and a refugee center in Bosnia-Herzegovina. By chance, a crew from Serbian television, RTS, was filming at the same locations that day. We filmed the same things they filmed, and sometimes we filmed them too. The Serbian producers of this film were part of that RTS film crew. The U.S. production work was done by the website, EmperorsClothes.com. We will show you what ITN left out and how ITN doctored raw images to produce 
the pictures that fooled the world. Here's Thomas Dykman. He was the German journalist who first raised suspicions about these famous ITN pictures. He's saying, look at some newspapers, most of the Western media. Not only is there no real difference in opinion on foreign policy matters, but even the same phrases are repeated. You see the same pictures with the same captions again and again. The ITN pictures bothered Dykeman. Looking at them, one night his wife noticed something. ITN claimed the Bosnian Muslims were in prison behind barbed wire. Why, she wondered, was the wire attached on their side of the fence? They could pull out the nails. Dykeman smelled a rat. He suspected the photos had been fabricated. He suspected special camera angles, tricky editing. He wanted to go to Ternopoli to see for himself. And there he saw the concentration camp that never existed. Examining things on location, Dykeman saw what had been done. The reporters, Penny Marshall and the others and her crew, were in a barbed wire enclosed space near a transformer station and barn. From there they took pictures of refugees who were walking around quite freely outside the fence. During his visit, Dykeman made a drawing of the buildings and people as they had appeared on the day the ITN crew filmed at Tenopolye. There was a barn and a transformer station, a refugee center building, an open air reception area, a recreation area near the refugee center, the fenced-in area from inside which the ITN crew did their filming, and the barbed wire and chicken wire, which was portrayed as evidence of a death camp at Tenopolye. What Thomas Dykeman realized was the Western world had been deceived by pictures fashioned using camera angles and editing. He published his conclusions in the newspaper Novo. His report was picked up by a small alternative London magazine called Living Marxism, or LM. Okay. On January 23, 1997, ITN struck back. The big news station and reporters Ian Williams and Penny Marshall, who had been awarded several prestigious awards for the phony pictures from Chernopolye, including the Royal Television Society and BAFTA awards, filed suit against LM, charging libel. What really happened at Omarska and Chernopolye the day Penny Marshall filmed? The impression one would get from the pictures everyone saw was that ITN sneaked into a Bosnian Serb death camp and hurriedly shot some pictures and then rushed off. This is simply untrue. 
On August 5th, 1992, Channel 4 reporter Ian Williams, ITN reporter Penny Marshall, ITN cameraman Jeremy Irvin and their technical crew asked for and were granted permission to visit Omarska and Ternopolye, claiming that they wanted to show the world how the loyalist authorities treated rebel POWs and how they helped local Muslim refugees to survive. The local authorities provided military escort since fighting was going on nearby. So these two crews, the ITN crew and ours, visited two locations that day. The first stop was Amarska. This is Simo Dilyacha, chief of the public security forces at Amarska. Here we see him talking to the reporters from ITN and from the Yugoslav crews. The crews were allowed to film whatever they wanted and to talk to anyone they liked. But the ITN people never showed the public any of the footage shot in Omarska. Why? Could it be because Omarska didn't look that bad? That it didn't give the proper image of a Serbian detention center? We visited the prison, which had previously been the conference hall of the local mining company administration building. As we in the Yugoslav crew filmed that day, we often accidentally included pictures of Ms. Marshall, shown here, and other members of her ITN crew. We talked to the prisoners at lunchtime. We talked to their wives and children, who visited them freely. A tragic note. After Penny Marshall's report was released, Mr. Simo Joliac's name was put on a so-called secret list of Hague war crime suspects. He was never brought to trial. Instead, he was shot dead by NATO troops while fishing with his son and brother-in-law on July 10, 1997. Why? Was this just a coincidence? Next, the two film crews visited a humanitarian refugee center in the village of Ternapolye, some three to four kilometers away from Amarska. The center was mainly used by people in transit. They were trying to get away from the fighting and needed a place to stay during their travels. Our reporter, Mr. Bojanic, talked to some of these people who had escaped the war zone. The 
The refugee center at Chernobyl included a medical facility. The Yugoslav and ITN crews interviewed Dr. Meshtrinich Idris, a Muslim doctor there. While you're viewing this film, keep in mind that these pictures, the interviews with the refugees, the Muslim doctor, and so on, which suggest a humane refugee center functioning under difficult conditions were never shown by the ITN news station in Britain. And keep in mind that this refugee center is the place that ITN portrayed as a death camp. <laughs> After the conversation with the Red Cross representative, we passed a group of new refugees. They were being registered by the civil authorities. Miss Marshall chose not to set up her cameras and film in this open area. Instead, she and her crew maneuvered into a partly enclosed space used as a storage area for wheelbarrows and the like. The dilapidated fence had chicken wire on the bottom and a few strands of barbed wire on top to discourage theft. Our crew filmed the ITN people as they maneuvered into this area through a hole in the broken down fence. Then we followed, and both crews set up within the enclosure, filming the refugees wandering around outside. There were heaps of building material and barrows, and we kept stumbling over them while trying to set up. Miss Penny Marshall tried to talk to the nearest refugees, but in vain, since she didn't speak Serbo-Croatian. People searched for someone who could speak English. While they were looking, our reporter, Mr. Bozanic, talked to some of the refugees. Someone in front of the crowd of refugees said, Here, this one speaks English, pointing to Mr. Mehmed in the overalls. Mr. Bozanic from the Yugoslav crew filmed Penny Marshall's conversation with Mehmed. Later, the following was shown in Yugoslav TV with Mr. Bozanic supplying an informal translation of the English conversation. Penny Marshall had set up her cameras behind barbed wire. She was in position. Now she searched the crowd for that perfect look. She wanted a star for her story, the story she would sell the world. You will see her conversation with Mehmed from our camera's angle once again. 
To make it clearer this time, here's a little diagram showing the position of the two crews. The ITN people are the blue circle on the left, we're the red circle on the right. Because the film crews were a yard apart, we filmed the same shots from a slightly different angle. Sometimes we filmed the ITN people as well. Miss Marshall is interviewing Mehmed. My name is Mehmet. How did you come to be here? What happened? Who do you know? I think it's very fine. Nothing wrong, but it's very hot. You sleep outside? Or inside? No, no, inside. No, no, no. It's very It's very fine. Very, very fine. How did you come here? Are you a fighter? With the bus. With the bus. Came are you a fighter? No. 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 Came to your house and took you. Yes, yes, yes. You feel safe here? I think it's very safe, but it's it's very hard. Other other things, it's, it's, it's very. very hard. This man is very thin. Yes, yeah. yeah, very thin, but I I think. All the people is not the same. No, no, I think it's a refugee camp, not the prison. If you wanted to get on a bus to Daniel, could you do that? I think it depends on the civil government. It depends on the civil government. You cannot leave. You cannot leave here. No, no, not now. Not now. Okay. Where are the women and the children? The women and the children is, is the house. Yeah. Why do you have this? So you were taken um, and brought here on the bus. Yes. And you can't leave. But you don't think it's the prison. I think it's not the prison. It's not the prison. It's the refugee camp. Where do you want to go? the raw material was all there back in her editing room Marshall and her associates saw just how beautiful this raw material could be perfect for fabricating a death camp to create the proper image of a death camp Marshall only had to overcome three problems first problem barbed wire was nailed only above the chicken wire because the barbed wire was nailed on the refugees side it was obvious they were on the outside of the enclosure free this problem could not be entirely solved therefore it was crucial to make a diversion to make the picture so horrifying people would not notice unfortunately for Marshall Ms. Dykeman had a keen eye Fikret Alich was the main diversion Mr. Alich, whom you see here, was thin, and his chest and rib cage had a deformed appearance due to a childhood disease. Stripped to the waist to escape the terrible August heat, Mr. Alich had the look Penny Marshall was hunting for. ITN could easily edit his pictures to produce what seemed like a death camp victim. The second problem, the storage area was packed with wheelbarrows. The fence was largely made of chicken wire with only a few strands of bobbed wire on top, hardly the image of a death camp. Third problem, the enclosed area was small. The result, each camera crew kept shooting pictures, including the other. We filmed Marshall, her people filmed us.
Since Marshall wanted her pictures to look like a daring scoop, these images had to be edited out. Marshall solved the second and third problem using what we call a mask. Give me the lower mask. Upper, right, left. So just as the terrible fighting in Bosnia had deprived these unhappy men of their homes, now Ms. Marshall's pictures, which circled the world, cost them their legs as well. Allow us to demonstrate how Marshall doctored the pictures to make them suitable for use by newspapers and magazines. We'll illustrate by repeating the process. Stop on those two. Now give me a still shot. Now give me the Novell Observateur underneath. Notice the difference in the camera angles. Remember, their crew was shooting more to the left, which is why our camera picked up three men where their camera picked up two. Let's go back to the live picture. Do the doctoring the way they have done it. Go to the guy in the blue shirt. Stop. Give me the right mask, please. Blow it up. Now add the fellow on the right. The one in black and white. Now kill the color on the blonde one. Now fade out. That's it. Fade out with the short zoom lens. Move our picture back and below give me the Nouvelle Observateur picture. Blow up Nouvelle Observateur. Scan. Compare. Bingo. One Nazi nightmare. Give me the live picture again, the shot where they push Fikret towards Penny. The right and left mask. Upper and lower. Blow it up. Now they give us Humanité Dimanche. Give me the live picture again. Upper and lower. The left and right mask. Blow it up. Give me the magazine Novo with Welt's picture. After the report was aired, magazines started to compete as to who could publish the most appalling pictures, and so they added their own editing. The entire Western media got in on the act. Let's create a few photographs. Deform space. Warp the people. Take the color off. Skinny boy. Take the color off. Skinny boy. Take the color off. Skinny boy. Take the color off. The spin doctors of this world still didn't trust their readers to get the message, so they made it perfectly clear. They added World War II Nazi concentration camp snapshots, complete with real barbed wire. In the U.S., Bill Clinton and George Bush competed over who was the most horrified by the revelations of Serbian so-called atrocities proven by the pictures taken at Trinopoli. Referring to these clips during the pre-election campaign in 1992, Bill Clinton demanded that George Bush immediately bomb the Serbs. 
Not to be outdone, during a TV speech, George Bush compared the refugee camps with Nazi death camps. The demonization of the Serbian people had begun, full blast, and it has lasted to this day. In 1996, the United Nations General Assembly passed the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Article 20 includes the following. 1. Any propaganda for war shall be prohibited by law. 2. Any advocacy of national, racial, or religious hatred that constitutes incitement to discrimination, hostility, or violence shall be prohibited by law. In the opinion of the producers of this movie, the pictures which ITN sent around the world violated this international covenant directly. The covenant became law in 1976. Most countries ratified it, and by generally accepted standards, it is now international law.